Good evening. Welcome to Midnight Devotions After Dark with God. So you know how we do it. We start off with prayer first. So, Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're going to do on tonight, Lord God. We thank you for all that you've done today, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for what we've seen and heard about you, Lord God. And now, Lord, what we've experienced for ourselves, have experienced you to be personally, Lord God. Lord, we just love you, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you remove me out of the way right now, Lord God, and begin to minister, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for your words of encouragement through the word, through the Bible, Lord God. We thank you for opening up your heart to us through the Bible. Lord God, now we just, as we sit here with you, to sup with you, that the Bible, Lord God. Lord, we just ask that you meet us here, Lord God. And not just meet us here. We know that you're already here, so we're meeting you here, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we love you and we can't do without you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so tonight we are in Exodus chapter 18 exodus chapter 18 i want to make sure my sound is up really quick while you're getting that i hopefully you all are going in your bibles with me and not just trusting what i'm saying through my bible because i could give you some shisty stuff you always want to look follow your pastor follow anyone who's trying to teach you to work follow them in your bible as well so exodus chapter 18 we're going to start with verse 8 and it reads, Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to rescue Israel from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. He also told him about the problems they had faced along the way and how the Lord had delivered his people from their troubles. Jethro was delighted when he heard, uh, when he heard about all the Lord had done for Israel as he bought them out of Egypt. Praise be to the Lord, Jethro said. For he has saved you from Egyptians and from Pharaoh. He has rescued Israel from the power of Egypt. I know now that the Lord is greater than all other gods because his people have escaped from the proud and cruel Egyptians. I have read for you Exodus chapter 18. We started at verse 8 and ended at verse 11. The devotion title tonight is, hmm, we're just going to wing it with God tonight. It's going to be called, Is Being an Acquaintance Enough? Is Being an Acquaintance Enough? Maybe with the subtitle of, Have You Heard? So, for those who don't know who Jethro is, who Moses is talking to, Moses is actually talking to his father-in-law. His father-in-law came out, and his father-in-law has brought Moses' wife and his two children along when he came out to speak to Moses. And um, what God is showing me out of this chapter is, are you an acquaintance, or are you a friend of God? I used to sing a song back in my old church called, Have You Heard? And the song talks about, do you really know Jesus for yourself? Have you heard about all the things that he's done? And we don't, God doesn't only want you to hear. God doesn't only want you to be with him off of someone else's testimony. God doesn't want you just to be with him for what he can do for you. God wants you to be with him so you can get to know who you are. When you get with God, you come into a sense of purpose. You you know, you go around all through life, and many people don't know who they are. There are people in the church, leaders, that have no idea of who they are. You don't come into who you are until you know whose you are. And whose we are is God. God created us from day one. He said he knew us in our mother's womb. He knows every number of hair every strand of hair that we have on our head. Now, if we would try to count every strand of hair we had on someone else's hair, especially my natural hair, you would get very frustrated. 
But God took the time to count every strand of hair on our head because he loved us just that much. Jethro told Moses, now I know basically that God is real because of what he's done for you. God wants us to get past that stage. He don't want it to be, now I know God because of what he's done for someone else. If Jethro would have said, now I know God because of what he's done for you and what I've seen him do for me. It's excellent to hear people's testimonies. It's excellent to hear people's breakthroughs and triumphs and how God got them out of where they are and to see them at that next level. God wants to take everyone to the next level, to stage after stage after stage. He doesn't want anyone to be stagnant. When you first come into God, at first you may not feel anything. It's kind of like a tattoo. And I know I, I got to use analogies the way I break the word down. I have a lot of tattoos. When you first get excited about going in, you're excited about that new tattoo that you're about to get. And you hear the sound of that gun that before it even hits your skin. Something about there's a force, there's like a excitement. And when he first begins to outline, it may make you jump at first. You may jump, you know, kind of like, ooh, you know, because you may have just, you wasn't ready for it, what you was really getting into. And you relax, you learn how to relax your body. And you learn how to just let him outline what he has for you. What picture that you want. Now just take your time with me. Let me paint you the picture. You take that time and he outlines what the picture is. Soon after he outlines, he begins to shade. See, when God started outlining, showing me who he was, he started me at Genesis. When people come... To you, I, okay. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it back like this. When I first ask someone where I should start reading the Bible, you get all these answers. You should start in John. You should start in Matthew. You should start in Romans. You should start in First John. You should start here, or you should start there. And I'm like, well, when you read a normal book. Where do you begin? You begin at the beginning. You don't go into a book and pick a chapter. Just say you went to Barnes and Noble and everybody's been raving about the new book that's out. So you decide, I'm going to skip to chapter 12 and start reading from there. No, you don't. You start from the beginning to where you can understand the characters and understand what the book is about. Well, that's just how God is. You see, when you go down... When you're in church or wherever you are, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you make vows with him. When you walk down that aisle to meet him, whatever song that's playing, come to Jesus, whatever it is, whatever the praise and worship team is going, that is your wedding song. That is your wedding march. All eyes are on you when you walk down and you make vows to be with him. You say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. You know, I've chosen to give my life to you. Okay, you've done that. Those are your vows. That's your ceremony. When you stop, that's Jesus. Jesus is just the door to the Father. So when you start reading the Bible, that's where the Father is. When you start at Genesis, it begins to unfold. That's when the lining starts going. You hear it. But it don't start when God really sees your heart because he's a spirit. And no matter what you say, Lord, I just love you. I just want to be with you. I just want to. We can have all that. We can say all those words, and that's great. But God is a spirit. So God is on the inside. So when we, all that other stuff that we have on the inside, that's what he's reading, the undercover stuff. The mouth is good, but he talks about the tongue so much. The two-edged sword, that tongue, it will slice you up and can soothe you it can slice you and soothe you two-edged sword so here you go with god you open it up to genesis and you begin to read 
That's the lining of that tattoo. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It's a big tattoo. It's a big lining. Pretty soon, the shading process starts. He starts to fill in color. You begin to understand. You get a new knowledge. You get a new understanding of who God is. Why? Because God is introducing himself to you. He's wiping away. When that tattoo artist is doing that, and he's wiping away that blood, he's wiping away that dead skin, he's wiping away to where he can see the image. And he takes that down and wiping away. That's what he begins to do when we're in his word. We begin to read it, and he begins to go deep. He begins to wipe that blood away. See, because we washed in the blood of the Lamb. He begins to wash that blood away, and he begins to keep shading. Pretty soon, we understand our purpose. Pretty soon, we have a desire to do right. Pretty soon, we have a want to do right. Pretty soon, we will begin to talk, and we will begin to tell others the same way Moses told his father-in-law, Jethro. Like me, I can't keep it to myself. Jeremiah said it was like fire shut up in my bones. He's talking about that word, that anointing that God has on the inside of him. I have that same word. I have that same anointing on the inside of me. And once you connect with that power, you can't keep it to yourself. Not only can you not keep it to yourself, you want to tell everybody. Have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard what he can do for you? Do you know about the promises in his word? Do you know what he used Balaam's donkey to help Balaam? Do you know that he had a fish that he got a coin out of? Do you know that he used a rod to help Moses along? Do you know that he used a burning bush? God can use anything and everyone who is willing to be used. The scripture says if we don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. We have to cry out to God. We have to praise him for what he's done. I don't know about you, but I praise him on a daily. I have to be fed by him through the word every day. If I'm not, my day is not complete. If I go a day or two, I will feel neglected from food. And that food is coming from the Bible. I have to be fed. I have to be led by him. I have to be his cupbearer. Whenever I'm about to make a decision, I'm taking it to the head. Now, I'm not stopping right there. You remember Shanene off Martin. And Shanene, whenever she was about to make a good decision, a decision, she was, hold on, let me think about it. Oh, okay, oh. Even though that's funny, you got to think about what Martin was doing. He's taking it to the head because he's thinking about it. Even though he's having a conversation with himself, that's what we're doing because God is on the inside of us. So when we take it there, we're having a conversation with God, and God begins to minister. And if he does not give you an answer, that means that we cannot move, no matter what the situation looks like. But when we start to get that relationship going, and you start to see that tattoo, that tattoo is who you are. That tattoo is what's on the inside of you. You start having different desires. You start having a different way of thinking. Why? Because God is creating in you a new creature. See, he's washing away the old, and behold, all things have become new with him. You put on a whole new attitude. You put on a whole new lifestyle. That's why I understand when you come encounter with someone who's calling themselves a Christian, and they have attitudes and mood swings and they, they're just not representing what God is, that brotherly, sisterly love. Some people can't even understand how you love somebody. How I can tell a new person, I love you, or call them my sister and brother. The only reason why I can do that is because the love of Christ is on the inside of me. So I have to tell it. If you are a Christian, if you have been in a relationship with God, you cannot help but tell it. You want to preach it. You want to teach it. You want to write about it. You want to do songs about it. You can't shut your mouth about God. I'm not an acquaintance. I pray that you're not his acquaintance, but that you begin to start being his child. He walk with him and talk with him, and he'll tell you that you are his own. So I just thank the Lord for his word today. I thank him for leading the path, and I thank me for being able to follow, and I thank you for listening on tonight. So many blessings to you. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend, and I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow on God After Doc.